I'm working on a little bit different platform than I usually do. So please um, be patient with me that, uh, you know, some, some things might be not as smooth as always. Okay. But um, cool. We've got lots of people chiming in where they're watching from. Uh, yeah, cool. Florida, Minneapolis, West Virginia. Of course, we got Vegas in the house, Florida, Denver, Cornwall, UK. Julie, always popping in here. I know it's late for you, so thanks for being on with us. Hey, Katie from Chicago. All right, so here's what we're going to be working on tonight. Probably the most frequent thing that I hear in my with my coaching clientele is that people want more confidence. And so tonight we're going to talk about this very mysterious thing called confidence and how to hopefully to um, cultivate it within ourselves. Here's what I'd like to start out with is a little question for you all. On a scale of one to five, where do you feel like your sense of confidence is in general, just in life in general? One being, uh, I don't feel very conf confident. And five, feeling, you know what? I feel very confident in myself. So one to five, one being, I don't feel very confident most of the time. And five being, yeah, I, I feel pretty darn confident most of the time. For me personally, I would say that I'm... Three, maybe three or three, three and a half ish. Like I feel fairly confident in some situations and in others, I don't feel very confident at all, to be totally honest with you. And, you know, that's one of the things we'll kind of talk about is how how much it is. Um, it can be very situational, too. So, yeah, we're seeing 2.5, 4.5, 4.5, 2.5, 3.4, 4, 2.5. Awesome. Five, Patrice. Nice. Hi, Noni. Good to have you in from Massachusetts. Three-ish for Julie. Awesome. Yeah, so confidence is such an interesting thing because when I ask people, what is confidence? I'm going to ask you guys that too. Type it into the chat. What is confidence for you? Like when you think about yeah, it's just into four, but it depends on the situation. Ab absolutely. You know, what is this thing that we refer to as confidence? I found that for a lot of people, this is a really difficult question to answer. There isn't this very easy sense or this easy description of, oh, well, this is what confidence is. Andrea is saying when you're sure of yourself. Skylar is saying knowledge is confidence. Knowledge, Michelle's saying knowledge. Yeah, so and keep popping those in because we're going to continue to talk about this for a minute. I think that um, belief, belief in ourself and our industry and being able and capable of doing all that life asks with ease. Nice, Samantha. Sandy saying all knowing. Annabelle saying self worth. Michelle says repetition. Awesome. That actually came up. Skylar said an application of your uh, application of knowledge. Uh, Keith is saying, being sure of yourself, skills, knowledge, understanding. <laughs> yes, Andrea, I love that. When you know that you're going to kick ass. Yes, absolutely. Angela is saying, how comfortable I feel, knowledge and understanding. Good. So a lot of people are, are refer referencing knowledge, understanding, that ability to uh, um, be sure of ourselves. And I think that that's one of the most common things that comes up when we talk about confidence is it's that sense of trust in self, that ability to believe that we are capable. And I was just talking to my good friend, Josh, who we're staying with here. This is his home behind us. And one of the things that kind of came up is, you know, we use that word confidence, not just about self-confidence. We also talk about confidence where we feel confident in something you know it might be even like you know do you feel confident in the car you drive and if i say yeah, i feel very confident in that car well what are we saying we're saying that we have trust and we have belief that it will do what we ask it to do yeah jacinta you're key in on this and yeah Larray, you feel you have that sense that it's like i can do this that belief in self and so that ability to have the trust in ourselves, 
the ability to have the belief that we are capable to follow through and perform what we've said that we can do. Now, there's also something that comes up really often, and it's an abs, uh, in an absence of something, and it's that absence of doubt. So if we have that trust in ourselves, if we have that belief that we can do those things, and it, it doesn't come forward that it, there's those doubts that pop in and tell us we can't do those things, that we can't feel those things, that's where people feel confident. But just as so many of you have said, and yes, Dominic, you can view this later, absolutely. Um, you just come back to the YouTube and Facebook channel. But um, what so many of you have mentioned is very true. This, isn't, this doesn't tend to be an overarching energy that people feel in all aspects of life. Which if we look at that definition again, that it's the trust that we have in ourselves, the belief that we can follow through and do the things that we say that we can do, then not every single piece of our life is probably going to have the same rating. So it's probably a little unfair of me to ask you to rate yourself from one to five, because as many of you said, it depends, right? Like for me, uh, you know, let's put it in reference to the salon, because I know that most of you guys, that uh, most of you that are out there watching um, are hairdressers. In the salon, there's probably certain things that you feel very confident in, and there's probably other things that you don't feel as confident in. So for me personally, I felt very, very confident in my hair cutting skills. And then when it came to um, time to do some kind of complicated color, especially color corrections, then I would have rated my confidence more at level one. But if someone came in and sat down with a picture of something that they liked with a haircut, as long as it was realistic, I would probably rate myself most of the time it was a five. I felt very confident. Yeah, Jesse can. And if you believe in yourself, you can achieve so much more. And we're going to kind of talk about that. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out, Larray. Unfair question, right? <laughs> and Samantha's saying you're the exact opposite. You feel very confident in your color, but maybe less confident when it comes to the haircuts, right? And so that's a great example because I think this is really key when we talk about confidence because we'll say, oh, that person is a very confident person. Well, what is it that makes us feel that that person is a very confident person? And it's that they display that energy probably in most places. Even if it's a part that they do have some self-doubt, they tend to display on the outside that they, they have these certain things. So I want to kind of consider why do we feel like we want confidence? I know that that's kind of a weird question because it's probably um, kind of seems like, well, duh, why? Yeah, why wouldn't I want more confidence? But I really want to ask you guys, why do we have this desire to have more confidence? Andre's saying, fake it till you make it, right? Yeah, and, and sometimes that's exactly what it takes to get to that place of confidence. And we're going to kind of talk more about that in specifically. But why do we feel like we want to have more confidence? Awesome. Wendy's saying it makes us feel stronger and better so we can ser be in service to our clientele. Uh, Michelle's saying to be our best selves. <laughs> Samantha, fake it till you make it. Yeah. To be able to sleep at night. All right, confidence helps to sleep at night. So yeah, usually when we say, well, I want to have more confidence, it's because um, uh, we're trying to achieve something. We're trying to do something with that confidence. There's comfort. Yeah, surely there's a comfort level in confidence. And that's something that the human body and the human mind wants more of all the time. We're always looking for, oh, I want more comfort. I want more, uh, more pleasure, less pain. Absolutely. Ooh, nice point, Jacinta, because yeah, Jacinta says, I feel like you gain the trust of others if you're confident. That energy that we put out definitely affects how others interact with with us. So if, if in myself, I don't feel trust, I don't feel belief within myself, very often that will come through in my energy. 
and that will affect how other people perceive other people perceive us in that moment. They will pick up on that lack of trust. They'll pick up on that lack of belief. And so, of course, we want more confidence because we want to display that, and we want to um, have that reciprocal trust, that reciprocal belief with others. Absolutely. Jennifer saying preparedness creates confidence. Absolutely. Desire is the first step. We want to be great, Larray says. And yes, Kathy, education is a big part of how we develop confidence. Yeah, Jessica, we want more confidence so we fit in in the group. So key. So having that sense of community and um, identity fitting in, that all feels very tied to confidence. So um, what gets in our way of having confidence? Because I think this is a very key piece to how do we have more confidence? Well, if it was as easy as like, well, yeah, I want more of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, magically, all of a sudden it appears within me. I all of a sudden have more confidence, right? It's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, it's like Adele said, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it's not that easy. So what gets in our way? What blocks us from, from this sense of confidence? For me, it's previous experience very often. It's, um, it's looking back at the past and saying, well, in this situation, maybe I didn't perform at the level that I wanted to before. Maybe I didn't say the things that I wanted to before. Something happened that um, was uh, not comfortable or it brought me pain or it brought me sadness. And so those previous experiences can be a huge blockage to future confidence. Larray, yeah, great point. Listening to negativity, the negativity around us, the negativity on social, the negativity that might be coming at us from people that don't believe in us, that can absolutely be a, a place that blocks that sense of um, confidence within us. Lisa, our thoughts, our thoughts are huge here. And we're going to talk about story in just a minute because that's so important. Self-doubt gets in the way. Absolutely. Andrea is saying, I think I'm so confident I want to hang out with you guys, but if I was in front of you and Sam, I would be starstruck and lose all confidence and fall on my face. So you totally brought one point up that I, I think is really huge. How many of you have had that sense that in most situations, you do feel confident, but then when you end up in a situation that maybe in, you're in a situation that you look up to someone, or you feel like they maybe have more success or more, more status or more something, the confidence kind of disappears. I think that happens pretty often to us, right? That we feel like in certain situations, like, yeah, I'm pretty confident. But then we walk into a certain room or a certain situation and that confidence kind of disappears because we see this even like maybe what we perceive that even have more grandeur to it um, or that bigger sense of confidence, it tends to reduce ours. And it's important for us to recognize these things because these are the things that are the detractors to confidence. So if we want to have more confidence, then we want to understand that these certain experiences, these certain things, Adele's saying, yeah, happened in school. Um, these certain things are the things that we want to make sure we're not... Uh, purposely putting us into a place to experience these things. Ah, I love that, Shirley. Sometimes you may feel not confident. You do that, fake it until you make it. Other people believe in you and the feedback loop is what creates confidence in you. Yeah, that's beautiful. BB Gaines, you just graduated Cosmo School. Yes, this helps awesome. I love it. Naysayers, yes, Skylar. Those naysayers out there that want to keep us from feeling confident. And that this is a perfect transition into the next point, which is what's the difference between true confidence and overactive ego, right? You're welcome, Skylar. I love that this is on point for you today. Um, this is such an important piece because the naysayers or the people that would like to take our confidence from us even if they feel or they seem that maybe they have this essence of um, confidence, 
That's not confidence, that's overactive ego. And let's be clear about what I mean by overactive ego, because ego in and of itself is not a bad thing. Ego in and of itself is actually a, a completely necessary piece of your psyche, because the role of ego is to protect you. It's to keep you safe, and it's to keep you even comfortable. It wants to bring us more pleasure and keep us from pain. That's the ego's role. So the overactive ego starts to, be, starts to kick in when it senses that there is threat, that there is something beyond us that we don't have control over. The overactive ego kicks in to give us a sense of, conf or not confidence, but safety. And my friend Carlo Novoa, who I do transformation, or sorry, testimony Thursdays with, um, he always says that ego is there to support you, even if it means keeping you stuck, even if it means telling you stories that are not helpful to you. Because what it's trying to do is it's trying to keep you comfortable and keep you safe. So the ego pops in and it tells you these stories like, you know what, you're not enough. Or it might turn out to be something where you start to treat other people like they're not enough because what it's trying to do is protect you. It's trying to protect you from experiencing something that you experienced in the past. It's trying to keep you from disappointment because let's face it, hey, if you get the confidence to jump up onto that stage and stand in front of that audience or um, if, it, um, if that confidence gives you the ability to take that next job, then there's that potential that maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe you get let down. Maybe you feel um, disappointment. And so that's where the ego starts to step in. And that's not confidence. That's ego. That's the overactive ego. Um, just again, when I was an apprentice, I wasn't confident. And, but once you graduated and learned you can do it, that's where the heart came in. Yeah, got to stay strong and push through. So um, let's go there because that's really what we want to talk about tonight, first and foremost, is how do you gain more confidence? So um, I was having a conversation with an old friend of mine that she used to work with me at a salon back in Salt Lake City. Actually, Salt Lake City is right down here. We're visiting um, Utah right now. And she contacted me and she reached out and she said, you know, my son, he really struggles with confidence. And so how do I help him? How do I support him? And here's the part that you're probably not going to want to hear. In everything that I've read, in everything that I've studied, in every situation I've been in, I really have yet to find something that is a specific practice or a specific path directly to confidence. I even read this book called The Confidence Trap, and it had lots of good techniques for building other things, but not directly affecting confidence itself. And here's why. Is because what I believe, and I'm, let me be very clear about this, this is my belief just based on the experiences that I've had so far, confidence itself is a result of other things. It's not something we step directly into. I have met people that seem to have a natural sense of confidence about them. I believe that their past experiences have allowed them to maintain that. But when it comes to being confident, there is only one way to grow confidence, and it's to feel the fears, it's to face, the, face those fears, and it's to face those doubts and step forward into them and to do the things that we are afraid of, to do the things that we are intimidated by. And I think if any of you look back at your, your process now, of you know, going through hair school, going through becoming a hairdresser, and you look at those moments that you um, didn't have the confidence, what ended up building the confidence? It was actually courage. So um, for me, what I've discovered is that it's not so much about developing confidence first, it's about developing courage and compassion first. Because we need the courage 
Yeah, Angela, to prove to ourselves exactly what you're saying, the courage allows us to prove to our body, to prove to ego, to prove to mind that we will be okay. That all of these crazy stories that the mind tells us, that the ego pops in and tells us, you're not good enough, you're not going to achieve, you're not going to be successful. To try and keep us safe, we have to then step fully into that, go through the process on the other side, that's when the mind gets its satisfaction and the mind says, oh, but we did it and we didn't fail and we, and we didn't die. So yeah, Larray, courage is, that's, I think, what's so key. And that's even when I was talking to my friend about her child, I'm like, I think that's the only thing that will eventually build confidence is to help him feel the courage to step into those things that we're afraid of. And I also think, yeah, Robbie, you're like about, you're saying exactly. The key is to be compassionate to ourselves as well. Absolutely, I'm gonna bring that up on screen because this is exactly the piece that I think we sometimes miss. We might develop the courage. We might develop that like, yeah, okay, let's go get this done. Without compassion, that's where I think that we are setting ourselves up for and the letdown, right? Because the compassion, um, the compassion part, that's what allows us to not be perfect. That's what allows ourselves to feel. And this, to your, to your point here, Adele, your confidence might go down when people judge you. When people judge you, what happens is your compassion for yourself is, is not supporting you. Because if in that state of being compassionate with ourself, you know what? Yeah, the naysayers are out there. The doubters are out there. But my compassion for myself says, I'm okay. And it's the compassion also allows us to feel those negative feelings that we label because the lack of um, the lack of confidence that's where people start to should all over themselves they say well i should feel confident like i have all of this experience and i have all of this proof and i have all these things so i should feel confident but that's not being compassionate compassionate is yes i have this experience i know that i have the potential i have the training i have all of these things that allow me to be successful if I take this path. But the compassionate me says, and it's okay that right now I'm not feeling 100% confident in it, but I can then find the courage and then jump. <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> I don't think I understand that sentence, <laughs> Wendy. Um, something about a tree honk. So, Yes, exactly, Ray. Larray, like we get to that place and we can look back. Sorry, I'm just looking at some of your content comments here because it's always important for me that I, I that we stay together. Awesome. Love that, Skylar. Yeah, it's better to fail at something new than to be great at something you've done always. And that's when it really comes out. Um, Skylar, you're asking, what about choking up even with the knowledge? So again, this is, I think, where the compassion aspect really has to come in so strong. Because in the moment, of course, when the confidence drops, <laughs> yeah, when, don't worry, Wendy, you'll get it. You'll figure it out. But in that sense of compassion is understanding that when the confidence isn't present, when that confidence isn't fully there yet, of course, when we go to step forward, and let, let's use a specific example. Um, I'll share like the very first time I got to stand in front of an audience because you all see Andrew at 21 years of experience teaching. <laughs> this is me feeling fairly confident to talk to you all because I've done it for 21 years. So let's go 21 years back. 
I'm a brand new apprentice at a, at a salon and the guy that ran my salon, um, he was the, uh, I think he was like the regional education director for TG product line. You guys have probably heard of Bedhead, right? So um, I start working with Tyson and Tyson needed people to go out and teach product knowledge classes to other salons. And I was definitely not very confident in speaking in front of people at this point. And he's like, you know what? Why don't I train you? You can go out to these salons and teach these product knowledge classes. And I'm like, yeah, cool. This sounds really fun. So I go through the training. He teaches me all of these different things. And so to your, you know, to your point, Scottler, I definitely had the knowledge, like, because we drilled it hard. Like he had me go through the presentation over and over and over. So I got to a point that standing in front of Tyson and presenting the information I actually did feel pretty confident because the knowledge was there. So um, I go to the salon, I get my whole thing set up and I kind of turn around to start talking to this group of, you know, 15 hairdressers that, who I did not know. And you better believe this just went, oh, oh God everything that I knew about TG product just disappeared in that moment. And I looked at, at them and I looked at this like pile of products standing next to me that I was supposed to teach about. And I just froze because in that moment, my expectation was for me to perform. And what ended up happening is this really gnarly loop started happening because then the beat myself up factor kicked in. Oh my gosh, Andrew, come on. You prepared for this. You know this stuff. And like, you're totally letting yourself down and they think you're an idiot. So all of the compassion for myself was gone in that moment. So not only was my confidence completely shot, I felt the nerves, I felt the anxiety, but then I had no compassion for myself at, the, at that moment to be okay with the fact that I was experiencing this. I finally started to teach and I got through this first class and it was not good <laughs> for sure. But I remember the next, the next couple of classes, the next couple of classes, I was able to kind of step in there and be like, okay, you're like, you kind of know this is coming. You know, this moment of that lack of confidence, you know, that moment of the nervousness is going to come. So being okay with it. And so in that moment, I felt like I was able to harness some compassion for myself and just be like, okay, here we go. You know, you're going to get the nerves, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. And so that courage and that compassion kicked in and I kept moving. And with every single time I caught that, taught that class, of course, that class got a little better. It got a little better. It got a little better. And next thing you know, standing up in front of a room of 15 other hairdressers and teaching a TG product knowledge class. Oh, I felt confident and I could, I could deliver it with ease. But guess what happened that first time that I got to step on stage to teach a haircutting class? Same thing happened. Stepped on stage, the nerves come up, the confidence drops, the, the voices in the back of the head. Oh, you're an idiot. Like all these, you know, negative voices come running in. But we do it. We get to the other side and we go, okay, I didn't die. <laughs> and so that builds a little sense of confidence for the next one and the next one. So I guess what I'm trying to share, yeah, um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get your name right here, but you got Yasmin, I think you're, is maybe close to how you might say it. Practice makes, makes perfect, right? Because in that moment, what had to happen is the confident, the confidence came because the courage to step into the fear, the compassion for myself to not have the expectations of perfection. That's what builds confidence, right? Let me just kind of scroll back through here. Um, Shirley, which was worse, beating yourself up or thinking they thought you were an idiot? So, uh, in some ways, I kind of feel like they're the same for me, at least I, I experienced them in the same way because the beating up was the thought they think I'm an idiot. It wasn't so much that I thought I was an idiot. My concern was really their perception of me. So um, that's that for me, at least that's what was happening. 
Oh, thanks, guys. I'm just seeing a couple comments saying that I'm a great teacher. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you, Larray. You're awesome. Yes, the fear fear of failure is everywhere, Andrea. And <clears throat> yes, but when you have been to the bottom and you want nothing more than to make it to the top, you just go, 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 right? And yeah, Shirley, kicking the shoulds out of our out of our um, the words we use with ourselves that is so important. Stage fright, Adele. Yeah, that can definitely. So stage fright to me is that lack of confidence. It is that sense that we will be judged. Um, you guys might have heard someone say at some point that the people's greatest fear, and it's even above like the death from fire, is uh, public speaking. And that's, I've, I've read some things now that it's like, well, that's not necessarily true. If you gave people the option between standing on stage and being burned to death, most likely they're going to choose standing on stage. <laughs> the point of, of it is, is one of our greatest fears as humans is being seen for who we truly are. And so our fear with stage fright specifically is to stand in front of this group of people and to show up as who we truly are, which typically creates this kind of stage persona. And that's this is a whole different topic. But that place of um, that place of not wanting to be seen for who we truly are, that's what brings the stage fright. Hope that kind of helps. Yeah, Jessica, one day at a time. Thomas is saying presenting any content the first time or first few times is terrifying. But what makes it better is knowing you are there to serve them. It's not about you. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, I've heard Sammy say before, too, it is, if those nerves are really strong, it might also be because you are focused on the wrong thing. You are kind of focused on self, not how we are serving others. Now, I think that completely separating ourselves from a, the concern for ourself is maybe not a very human expectation, but I totally think that Thomas, you're, you're, you're onto something there, which is one of the things we teach people in education training is when you feel those nerves, return back to what is your purpose here? What is your purpose? It's to serve and support. And I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't say that, it, you know, showing up and teaching these classes, I don't still get a sense of nervousness. But as soon as I do, it's much easier now to return back to, hey, remember, what are you here for? What are you here to do? So great point there. All about intention, Ashley. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Skylar, being exposed is hard. It's vulnerability, but it's our greatest strength. So we've very much been taught, for sure, that vulnerability is this kind of bad, ugly, ugly thing. But, you know, especially if you follow any Brene Brown, it's kind of quite the opposite, isn't it? That vulnerability can be our very greatest strength. Absolutely. Yeah, Samantha, being in the service industry, I think that's one of the things that attracts us to the service industry, right? Is that we want to help and ser serve and support others. And it can get kind of tough to, to distance ourselves from the concern of what are they going to think, because that's kind of what we're doing, right? Is we're putting ourselves in a position, especially with our clients, that we're trying to serve them. So what they think about our service, what they think about us, that is a big piece of what we offer. So um, it's hard to... Um, separate ourselves from that. And I don't necessarily think it's about separating ourselves from it. And I'll just, I'm going to kind of start to put a close here on everything. Thank you for being with us, Julian. You know, you can always come back and watch later. But to kind of put a wrap on these things, you know, if we want more confidence, of course, we have to have that courage, we have to have that compassion to step out and do the things that intimidate us and scare us. Because again, that repetition and that process the more the mind gets reassured that we're not going to die, all the stories that we created in our minds aren't nearly as bad as what actually happened, even when we fall on our face, which could happen. But it's so important that we, um, 
recognize that we are human <laughs> and that all of these experiences, all of these feelings, all of these emotions that we feel, this is human to feel this. It is human to worry about what other people think about us. It is human to tell stories that are destructive to us in our heads. It is human to not feel confident. It is human to feel scared about stepping up in front of an audience. It is human to feel intimidated by your first day at a new salon. Because when we recognize that that is normal human, ex human experience, it stops feeding more energy and more emotion into it. I have to say one of the uh, things I wish we could remove from our language is that we have to fight against those feelings. Because if we see them as something horrible that we have to fight against and that we have to destroy, we are feeding much more energy into our concern. So my uh, tip to you and my hope for you is that what we've talked about tonight isn't so much about how you destroy your lack of confidence, it's how you build more of what you do want and choose to find comfort with those energies that sometimes feel uncomfortable or we label as being so negative. Because I promise you, from my own experience, the more I said, okay, here's that nervous energy, here's that self-doubt, and I can be present with it, I can accept it, I'm just going to be okay with the fact that I'm experiencing those emotions, guess what? Those emotions and those energies started to soften and the opportunity for me to step forward with compassion, step forward with courage, and then start to develop that confidence was so much more accessible. So that is my hope for you tonight. Yes, Adina, have compassion for yourself. I hope that just to, this discussion on confidence, what gets in our way, the things that we need to start to develop it, um, I hope that this supported you in some way, shape, or form. As always, you can always reach out to me. I'm here for you. You guys are part of a community here, the Sambia family that we have. Um, you are part of our community, so know that I'm always standing next to you. Sam is always ne standing next to you. Our entire team is standing next to you. You are always welcome to reach out to us to, to ask any question or just for some support. 